in a world governed by man, sinful man, i.e. man who's turned away from the light and dwells in darkness. Oh, that's a different kettle of fish, isn't it? When acts of evil are carried out, there is no room for forgiveness. And the repercussions of one's actions can have a devastating effect on the innocent victims. And that's what's happened in this case. William Douglas was a prominent spinning mill owner whose business thrived at a time when poverty was an all too common sight. His business success was built off the back of orphan and pauper children who he kept like slaves. Renowned for his brutal treatment of his child workforce, he worked endless hours around the clock to mass produce his products. Many tried to escape the clutches of this wicked man, even to the point where they would sooner take their own life rather than work another second at his mill. Some tried running away, but Douglas would issue wanted letters for the catcher and return, in exchange for generous amounts of money. <laughs> Once returned, the children would be chained and whipped. And some of them became crippled as a result, giving the mill its nickname. The Crip And with all the misery and pain that William had inflicted, there only seemed to be one appropriate title for such a dark and sinister man, and he went by the name Black, Black Douglas. Douglas. Doesn't that make a change? A nice bit of sunshine for a for a change. And normally it's raining on my videos. I don't know why, but it always seems to rain. But they don't call it sunny Salford for nothing, do they? Now today I'm outside. I'm on the old park here on Whit Lane. And what I'm here to do is to document where Black Douglas once lived. Now if you look sort of where these two houses are, these two houses roughly around here now that is where Pendle give or take that is where Pendleton Old Hall once was and Pendleton Old Hall was Black Douglas's house that is where he lived that is where he slept and that is where he died he actually died pretty much 100 yards in front of me if that and then to the right going this way is where his mill was that's where his mill was now if you flash back to the 1700s this place as you see today, this sort of beautiful housing estate, this new housing estate, this would have been a place of sorrow and misery. It really would. The abuse that went on here is unforgivable. And the reason that I'm here today is because there's still sort of stuff going on. Um, we all had ghost stories as kids, being told not to play on this park round here. Don't be playing round here after dark because Black Douglas will get you. And pretty much everyone on Whit Lane has got some sort of story to say about him. Whether it's a ghost story or it's an old sort of urban myth. And a lot of the Black Douglas, how horrible he were, he's sort of just like Chinese whispers and it was a bit of a myth and this, that and the other. It's more of an urban legend, Black Douglas. But let me tell you, I've done some serious research on him and they're not myths. It's true, and the stuff that he did to these orphan children that he enslaved and made them work in his mill um, is unforgivable. Now, like I say, all these ghost stories that go flying about about him, it doesn't surprise me, because for a man like as bad as him, there'd be no place ever in heaven for him. And I'm not getting deep about heaven and hell, but I don't even think hell would have him, and I think that's why he's sort of lost, and he's lonely, and he still resides around here, apparently. Now my dad, he's doing a bit of a, he's just brought his ghost game, my dad does a ghost pro program, uh, program, 
bloody hell, my dad's got a YouTube channel called uh, The Paradox Club, and you've seen him before on some of the videos. Now he's doing a couple of EVPs, and we'll see if we get anything, if we can capture any sort of ghost uh, voices or anything like that. But basically, I wanted to just show you here, I mean, I'll try and sort of overlay a shot of Pendleton Old Hall, which would have resided around here. But like I say, the land's probably scarred with all the, the bad things that have happened around here. And, you know, ultimately it was the children that was hurt. Um, and you'll, you'll find out more and more as we go into the sort of video. I'll go into more detail about that, but I'm just here basically to document this part and then we're going to push on back over these houses to the towards the River Irwell where his mill used to reside and with it being water powered it was a perfect location to be uh, for him to make his business successful because it was water powered mill straight off the Irwell it generated from the way and the power of the way um, used to power the whole of the uh, the whole factory the whole mill so it was an ideal spot for him to make his his money but like i say he made his money off the back of these these uh children that were just basically slaves to him and he sort of well he sort of owned them didn't he as sad as it were but they were the times and like i say not all history is rosy and it isn't always nostalgic as we all know history can be pretty dark as well and today that is what we're going to uncover on Black Douglas. My dad's had his little ghost box out again because obviously of all the ghost stories that are around here. I think I've caught one. Have you? Yeah. Let's have a listen. I'll let you decide. I think I know what it said. Right, go on. Um, Is it clear? I think it's clear, yeah. yeah. Now, I've just been doing this separately from our aunt. This is for the Paradox Club, so it's now to do with our aunt, Daft Monkey. So, <clears throat> because I've always known it as a bit of a bit of a um, haunted place. Now, I've done an EVP just over on the back field. And yeah. I'll let you listen. Go on then. And see what you think. I won't tell you when it is. What I'll do as well is, is with this footage, I'll enhance the audio so you can hear it a lot clearer if, we've, if it's caught something. Right, so this is just taken on just a, a couple of minutes ago. Right, go on then. Um, this land was once owned by... Um, Black Douglas, they call you Black Douglas. Does your ghost still haunt, haunt this park? That'd be a mad pie. Now, he was an evil man and used to beat um, the orphans, he used to take from the orphanage. So, could you tell me why you did that? Yeah, that? yeah, I heard it then. Right, I'll tell you what I think so he's saying. So, could you tell me why you did that? Let me listen. He, I, I hear he owned them. He owned them. He owned so them. Could you tell me why you did that? He yeah, owned them. Tell you what, tell you, I forgot I've got my microphone plugged in. Yeah. Let me just put the microphone to it. Right. I think he's saying he owned them. So, could you tell me why you did that? Put my microphone right up to it. One so more time. So, could you tell me why you did that? He owned them, definitely, innit? I hear he wow. owned them. How oh, mad's that? The land is mine. This mill is mine. Each brick, each horse, Day I die, and if I leave, we've all got to leave. Douglas ruled the mill with an iron fist, and he instilled the fear of God into the poor, pauper children, who was petrified and fearful just what this man was capable of. The building stood menacingly and it was water powered. I 
And with the building being situated so close to the River Irwell and its majestic way, it made great business sense to Douglas, as he relied on the Irwell to generate the building's main source of power. The size of the building must have been quite impressive for its time, as it boasted up to 4,000 spindles. He was also the chief supplier to many of the major cotton companies that were huge within the industry. Douglas was quickly becoming a well-respected man within the cotton industry, and along with his success, came his wealth. But little did people know the true story of just what was going on behind the scenes. These poor children from as far as Scotland was being snapped up and forced to work in his hellhole of a mill. Stories from neglect, abuse, even death still echo around the area today. It's even rumoured he would scour the streets in the dead of night on horseback looking for poor lonely children which he could snatch them up and hide away in his foreboding and sinister factory. <laughs> Hence why so many of the ghost stories about Black Douglas involve detailed accounts of the sound of a galloping horse and the fearsome crack <laughs> of his menacing whip. But whilst researching about him, it sounded to me like he was working on some sort of image, and he was becoming more and more fearful of how he was being perceived. We all know about his success and wealth, but he made out to people he was doing good by the kids that was working for him. Not classing them as slaves, but classing them as apprentices providing them with food and water and a place to live. He even went to extreme lengths of employing clergymen from the local church who apparently educated them. Thankfully, the mill is long gone and it is no more. But a recent archaeological dig unearthed the tear-soaked bricks from the house and mill that would have once been the only eyewitness to all the terrible deeds and acts this evil man got away with. If only walls could talk, eh? So where we sort of are here now, even though it just looks like it, well it is, it's like a construction site. Um, this sort of area around here is where his mill would have been and then directly behind sort of these barriers is uh, the River Irwell. So this is actually the sort of land where he owned. Underneath this soil was dug up the uh, remains of the old building and a lot of the pottery and stuff like that was found. But we're actually on, probably, probably studying where the factory, um, where the mill actually once was. How strange is that? Because there's just sort of houses here now. So we're actually stood on the land, possibly in the in where the, the mill were. So you can imagine the sound that would have been reverberating with all the spindles that was um, clattering and, and, and the noise coming from this place would have been deafening. You'd have heard it on the other side of Whit Lane. But it's weird walking around here now on the actual land of Black Douglas. Welcome to Brindleleaf Cemetery. Now I've walked past there so many times over the years and I've never, I didn't even know it was a cemetery. Obviously it just looks like a park, doesn't it? There's no sort of inkling that there's, there's graves, but I was told that the graves were laid flat and they were flattened for some reason, I don't know, but at one point there was upright. Now, I've just seen this on here. Now it says, 
William Douglas, known as locally as Black Douglas, was a mill owner from Charlestown. He was famed for his cruelty to children during the Industrial Revolution. His mills were well known for the terrible work he imposed on the children that worked there. And it, I don't know what that's, I think you can't see because it's sort of finger. It was said that he never once performed a generous act. He was buried in the original chapel of Ease, or Ease graveyard. Uh, on Brindleleaf Road. No trace of his grain stove remains, but the monument to him and his family can be seen in St. Thomas's Church on the northwest side of the gallery. Now, I've just been to St. Thomas's Church, which is over there, and I do believe that there's a plaque in his um, sort of honor, if you want to call it that. But isn't it crazy how sort of two to three, two, three hundred years we're still talking about this horrible, horrible man that once existed and he's not. Uh, there's not one good story to say about him. Now, I was told that these, um, off a woman, I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but she did get in touch with me. And she said that his grave literally sort of had a big monument coming off it. And the monument was, um, it was basically stood out a mile because he was so welfare and he wanted people to see how great his um, tomb were. And they had to pull it because he got desecrated. He got kicked in and vandalized really bad. But I can't believe I've, I'm in this graveyard. I didn't even know it was here. Um, I've just been, just literally come off it and I've just gone over there now to have a little read of that. But isn't it crazy that somewhere in this graveyard, actual Black Douglas is buried. And like I say, whether his, his remains are still here or not, I'm not too sure. This looks a bit strange, doesn't it? Because it sort of looks like something grand's been here maybe. This could have been his uh, grave, I don't know. At some point, you can't really make that out. It is really old. I mean, I shouldn't really be standing. Oh. Hey, Dad, check this out. Douglas, found it. Douglas, old all, no way. He looks like one, though, or an L. It's faded. His name? Douglas Oldall, it was Pendle Oldall, wasn't it? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Pendle Oldall, Pendleton Oldall. What? No way. Wow. This is where it must have been then. Maybe this was his finger, you know, where his big tomb would have been. Yeah. And Because this looks like it's had some sort of caging around it, doesn't it? Yeah. What does this say? Can you see it? Here, here beneath. Here beneath the bodies of, of Mary. Mary, the wife of Will Douglas. No way. Of, of the old, old, old Pendleton. Wow. We'd come full circle. Our paths had crossed in some strange kind of way. Here it was, stood on the land where Black Douglas was actually laid to rest. And all that separated us was six, six feet, feet of soil. soil. It felt surreal. The gravestone contained the details about his family members, but with no real mention of William. I began to wonder if any of his family knew just what kind of man he was, and did they also live in fear? Sorry, I'm just trying to get my head round this because he was called William Douglas, wasn't he? Of Old Hall. He died in 1810. Age 65 years old. It's believed he died of consumption, and a statement about his death reads this He bore a long illness, and with great fortitude and resignation, his last moments were tranquil, and he expired without any struggle the same day. But other accounts say different. Apparently, he died a slow, painful, and antagonizing death. But due to his stature, and just how much of a hate figure he actually was, he wanted the public to think that he passed away in peace with his family. Who knows? The land is now christened by the tears of his child workforce, and the feeling of sorrow and helplessness still resonates from the soil 
we now walk upon. Does the spirit of Black Douglas still haunt his old stomping ground of Whit Lane? Lost. Stuck between worlds. It's hard to imagine how somebody so cruel and wicked could possibly be at rest. Or maybe he chooses to stay. Maybe he still haunts a land out of choice. Still trying to put the fear into the eyewitnesses that see his ghostly spirit. <laughs>